Hello! In this video, I'd like to talk about one of the troubling consequences of the axiom of choice. This video is based on a paper called A Peculiar Connection Between the Axiom of Choice and Predicting the Future by Hardin and Taylor from 2008. A common type of mathematical puzzle is the hat puzzle. There are some number of entities who are wearing colored hats, and they can see other hats, but they can't see their own and they have to somehow guess what color hat they're wearing. For instance, one finite hat puzzle involves some number of cats who are lined up in a row, such that each cat can see the colors of the hats of the cats in front of them, but they can't see their own hat color and they can't see the hats behind them. So for instance, cat one can see all of the hats except its own, Cat 4 can only see the hats of cats numbers 5 and 6, and cat 6 can't see any hats at all. Starting from cat number 1, the cats will guess their hat color out loud, so that the cats in front of them can hear. The cats are allowed to coordinate in advance to come up with some sort of strategy, and the question is, how good of a strategy can these cats devise? Of course, the first cat has no information about what color their hat is. So they have to make a 50-50 guess. But that guess can transmit information to cats further on down the line who might use that to do better than 50-50 at guessing their own hat colors. For instance, the cats may pre-agree that cat number one will always guess the hat color of cat number two. This still gives cat number one a 50-50 chance of guessing correctly, but now cat number two knows exactly what color hat they're wearing. I'll let you try to figure out what the best strategy is for these cats. In the meantime, let's take a look at some infinite hat puzzles. So let's say that now we have infinitely many cats, one for each natural number. The cats can still see the hats in front of them and not their own. So cat zero can see all of the hats except their own, Cat 1 can see all of the hats except for their own and Cat 0's hat, and so on and so forth. Each cat's view of this infinite sequence is going to be roughly the same. They're all going to see countably many cats in front of them. So we could ask two different questions. What happens if cats don't know where they are in line? And what happens if cats do know where they are in line? That is, we could ask about what sorts of strategies these cats might have that make use of the information of which number they've been assigned and what strategies they have that don't make use of that information. But for now, let's assume that the cats know where they are in the line. To make things interesting, all of the cats will guess simultaneously what color hats they're wearing. One might suspect that this would make it impossible for cats to do any better than a 50-50 chance guess. But through a clever use of the axiom of choice, we can actually do better. Throughout this bit, I'm going to want to talk about infinite sequences of hat colors, infinite sequences of blue or green. And we'll say that two of these infinite sequences are congruent mod finite, this equals with a star on it, or equivalent mod finite, if the two sequences differ in only finitely many places. Equivalently, if there's some point beyond which they agree. This notion of equivalence is an equivalence relation, and so divides the space of infinite sequences of hats into uncountably many congruence classes. The cats will use the axiom of choice in order to pick out a representative from each equivalence class. The key thing here is that every cat knows the mod finite equivalence class of the actual sequence of hats. For instance, cat number four doesn't know the colors of the hats uh, of cats zero through four, but does know the colors of the hats of the tail of this sequence. And regardless of how you fill in those first five hats, the results are always going to be mod finite equivalent to each other and mod finite equivalent to the actual sequence of hats. They're all going to be the same after cat number five. And so cat number four and all of the rest of the cats know exactly what mod finite equivalence class the actual sequence of hats falls into. All of the cats are then going to consider the representative that they picked of that equivalence class. This representative is going to be mod finite equivalent to the actual sequence of hats. 
The cats are then going to guess their hat color in this representative sequence. And because this representative sequence is equivalent mod finite to the actual sequence of hat colors, only finitely many cats will guess incorrectly. This is highly counterintuitive. None of the cats have any information reflecting their hat colors, and yet, using the axiom of choice, we've been able to devise a strategy for these cats to guess that does better than simple random guessing. And it's worth noting that there wasn't anything special about our choice to have only two colors. This sort of strategy works as long as the cats know beforehand what the set of possible hat colors is. Let's consider now an even more infinite hat puzzle. Suppose that we have continuum many cats, one cat for each real number. Each cat can see the hats of the cats before it on the number line. I've switched the direction that the cats are facing so that this resembles more closely the situation of trying to predict the future. If we imagine the real number line as some sort of timeline, each cat can see all of the time before it, but not the current time and not the future time, not the time to the right of it. Again, all of the cats perceive the same continuum of cats, so we have to let the cats know where they are on the number line so that they can use that in their strategy. And again, the cats will all guess their hat colors simultaneously. As before, when the cats guess their hat colors, they have zero information that reflects what color hat they have. Nonetheless, using the axiom of choice, we can do better than a pure 50-50 guess. As before, we'll want to consider the space of possible sequences of hat colors. Except now, these configurations are given by functions from the real numbers to the set of hat colors. Using the axiom of choice, we can well order this set. For intuition purposes, it helps to think of this well ordering as telling us when one function is simpler than another function. We'll say that one function is simpler than another function if it is smaller in the well ordering. Admittedly, most of these functions can't be described in any sort of reasonable way, and so it very often doesn't make sense to talk about one of them being simpler than another. Nonetheless, the axiom of choice does give us a way of well ordering these functions. The guessing strategy for the cats will be as follows. Each cat is going to privately guess not only their own hat color, but actually take a guess at what the entire sequence of hats looks like. They'll do this by picking out the simplest sequence of hats, which is consistent with what they can see. So this will be the guessed world state of this particular cat. Different cats might have different guesses as to what the world state is. They'll have different guesses as to what the true sequence of hats is. The cats will then base their guess as to what their hat color is on the color of their hat in their guessed world state. In some sense, the cats are guessing that the sequence of hats continues on in the simplest possible way. How good is this strategy? Well, if we let W be the set of positions where the cats guess the wrong color for their hats, then W will actually have no infinite descending chain, no infinite descending sequence of positions where there are cats guessing incorrectly. Suppose that we had such an infinite descending chain. Here I've labeled the first three cats in this sequence, W0, W1, and W2. W0 sees cat W1 and therefore knows what color hat they have. So W0's guessed world state is going to have cat W1 as wearing a green hat. On the other hand, cat W1, because they guess that their hat should be blue, is going to have a different guessed world state a guest world state where W1 has a blue hat. By the same argument, any two cats in W are going to disagree on their guest world state. W1 has a guess at what the world state is based on a subset of the information that's available to cat W0. The extra information that's been added, in particular cat W1's hat color and the hat colors of the cats in between, has forced cat W0 to give up on the guessed world state of cat W1. The observations of cat W0 are not consistent with the guessed world state of cat W1. 
And so cat w0 is going to have to go to a more complicated world state for their guess at what the state of the world is. In other words, cat w1's guess at what the world state is is strictly simpler than w0's guess. And cat w2's guess at the world state is going to be strictly less than that. And cat w3's guess of the world state is going to be strictly less than that and so on and so forth. As a result, this is going to produce an infinite descending chain of simpler and simpler world states, contradicting the fact that this ordering is supposed to be a well ordering. So our assumption that there was an infinite descending chain of incorrect cats was wrong. Because this set has no infinite descending chain, one can do a little bit of real analysis to prove that W also has to be countable and nowhere dense. So that's pretty good. Out of our continuum many cats, only countably many of them have guessed incorrectly. But we can actually do better than that. Let's say that instead of being able to see as far as they want to the left on the number line, our cats can only see an infinitesimal amount to the left on the number line. In order to formalize this, we need the notion of a germ. We'll say that two functions have the same left germ at some real number t if there is some open interval ending at t on which the two functions agree. This relation is an equivalence relation, and so it makes sense to talk about the left germ of the function as the equivalence class that it falls into. This notion of equivalence is a little bit tricky to wrap your head around. It doesn't tell you anything about the value of the function at t, and it certainly doesn't tell you anything about what's going on to the right of t. But it also doesn't tell you any particular values of the function to the left of t. Suppose that we're interested in the value of f of r, where r is less than t. And all we know is some other function g that has the same left germ as f. Well, f of r and g of r might not be the same because it might be the case that f and g agree on some interval that doesn't go as far back as r. So knowing the left germ of a function doesn't tell us anything about the value of the function at any point, and knowing the value of the function at any point doesn't tell us anything about the left germ. This sort of counterintuitive situation is similar to what we see in differential calculus when we're looking at limits and derivatives. Knowing the limit of a function doesn't tell you anything about the value of the function at any points, and knowing the value of the function at any points doesn't tell you anything about the limit. And in fact, these notions are related to each other. Suppose that we have two functions, f and g, that agree on their left germs at t. That is, there's some interval up to t where they agree. Then the limit as x approaches t from the left of f and the limit as x approaches t from the left of g are going to agree with each other. So knowing the left germ is enough to tell us the left-hand limit. And if we know both the left and right germs, then that's enough to determine the limit as x approaches t of f of x. If in addition to the left and right germs, we also know the value of the function at t, this is the same as knowing some function g that agrees with f on an open interval surrounding t. And that's enough to determine the derivative at t because any two functions that agree on an interval around t are going to agree on the derivative at t. So let's set up our hat puzzle. As before, there's one cat for each real number, and the cat located at i knows the left germ of the hat colors at i. This is worse than being able to see only on some interval uh, from s to i for some s. A good way to look at this is that cats have a guess of what the entire past looks like. They, they can pick out some representative of the germ, uh, some representative of the equivalence class. Um, but that representative is only going to be good on some interval up to i and the cat doesn't know what that interval is. Whereas if we said that the cat could definitely see back to some point s, the cat would presumably know where that point s was and be able to be certain of all of the values that they see on the interval from s to i. 
In reality, the cats have no idea how far back they can trust the representative of the equivalence class that they've picked. As before, the cats know where they are and they'll guess simultaneously. How good can they do? As before, our cats will privately take a guess as to what the entire world state is, the hat colors of every cat, and their guess will be, again, the smallest function in the well ordering that they all agreed on beforehand, which is consistent with their observations. That is, it has the same left germ at their location. They will then guess their hat colors based on their hat color within this function. Again, we'll let W be the set of positions of cats that guess incorrectly. And for each rational number Q, we will let WQ be the set of cats in W, so cats who guess incorrectly, that correctly guess the real world state uh, going back to Q. That is, their guess at what the world state is, uh, is correct on the open interval from Q to their location. If we're looking at just the cats in some particular WQ, we can do exactly the same argument that we did before. All of the cats in WQ have correctly guessed the world state on the relevant interval, the interval from Q to their location. And so it is as if they correctly perceive reality on this interval. So by the same argument as before, WQ must be countable. On the other hand, the union of the WQs has to be all of W. Every cat, whether or not they're in W, is going to correctly guess the world state on some interval starting at their location, right? Their guess of the world state is going to have the same left germ as the actual world. And so on some interval, they're going to guess correctly, and we can shorten that interval down a little bit so that its endpoint is a rational number. And therefore, all of our cats in W are going to fall into some WQ, and in fact, they're going to fall into a lot of WQs. Because W is the union of the WQs, the WQs are countable, and there are countably many of them, one for each rational number, their union is going to be countable. W is going to be countable. And so yet again, only countably many cats are going to guess incorrectly, despite the fact that they can't see very much at all. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below, and I hope to see you in a future video.